To the coronavirus pandemic, a live look at San Jose. We're learning two cases of a new Omicron subvariant have been detected in Santa Clara County. Joining us live now, UCSF infectious disease expert Dr. Peter Chin Hong. And doctor, what can you tell us about this new subvariant and, and, and how does it spread? Well, Ryan, it's probably just like its parent, Omicron. And right now, we don't have any information to think that it acts otherwise, except that in Denmark, where they do a lot of genomic sequencing, so it may be you know, faster in terms of getting that information, um, it spread from about you know, maybe 20% of the sequences in December to then 45%, um, you know, the second week of January, and now it's up to 65% of the cases in Denmark. The UK has seen a, sim you know, a little bit of a rise as well. Norway, India, the Philippines, 40 different countries have also reported cases. Whether or not this is going to be a new Omicron, it doesn't have a new letter. There's not a designation of pi, which is the next letter after O. But, um, you know, we don't think it's causing more severe disease from the initial analysis from Denmark. And I'm confident that our current vaccines will work at protecting most people from getting into the hospital and definitely even more from going to the ICU. And so this variant is popping up just as COVID cases are starting to drop. So uh, what I'm hearing from you, we, we don't have to be that concerned with it. No, I mean, I think we still have to be uh, very curious about what's going on um, and you know just be flexible in our thinking, but again, you know, I don't think there's evidence that people, for example, who got Omicron recently will then get super infected or another infection with, uh, you know, this BA2. Uh, because it's so close to Omicron, it would be really weird if it were evading Omicron's antibodies. And Pfizer just started a trial for their COVID vaccine that targets the Omicron variant. So do you think these vaccines need to be constantly updated depending on the variants that might be out there? Well, it depends on what your goalpost is. If your goalpost is prevention of infection, no matter what, like even a mild symptom or, or no symptoms, um, then you probably need to constantly update your vaccines to respond to the changes in the spike protein. But if your goalpost is preventing people from getting really sick to go to the hospital, then I would argue that we're already there with the boosters uh, of the original vaccine. So. You know, it depends on how we evolve as a society, you know, in the upcoming months. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr.